What can I do for you? Mm-hmm. Like, ah, da, 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 da. no, no, no. What can I do for you? What do you need? What can I do for you? Oh, so, good. Yeah. Cyprian, are you drinking caffeine? Yeah. Oh, how long have you been back on that? Uh, a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to Royal Pass. I'm your host, Andrew. Tonight, I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is your guys' favorite secular holiday? Like, uh, not the, you know, not the holy ones, not the ones at the church, mm. but the commercial ones. I was going to ask about season. You guys are from California. What do you know? No, we don't have seasons. We Actually, have I know seasons. more about seasons than you do. Mm. because i'm from california oh true it's more pronounced because i I have because i know what it means to not experience seasons see for you being a missourian you've known seasons all your life but i I come from a land with no seasons so coming to a land with seasons not only do i appreciate but i can infinitely like so there's a philosophical debate here so this is is philosophical or is it factual well, because I could, you know what? <laughs> What's your guys' favorite <laughs> secular holiday? <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably up there. It's the closest thing to a yeah. spiritual slash Christian holiday. We have. I would agree with that. Feasting and being thankful. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I would, but Thanksgiving. Well, there's, a, there's a Thanksgiving Day prayer in the uh, St. Tikon's uh, Orthodox Prayer Book. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Thanksgiving Day? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Mine is uh Christmas. I can't help it. I'm a sucker. Is Christmas a secular holiday though? This Christmas is. There's a difference between for me the difference between saying. nativity and nativity. Right. Nativity is is right. the reason why I don't partake in cookies and all like the donuts right. and like everything in the hot cocoa during the Christmas season is because of nativity. Nativity way up here christmas just really fun it's just like a really fun time it's a reason to be happy it's like you know it's like there's there's a history about the about christmas about christ mass the way that it started and that uh, it was outlawed by the church for a long time actually because it was like because it was so secular like it was really bad like it was kind of like the purge if i'm remembering correctly Oh wow! That basic, yeah, that basically like people would just run riot. Like it was just people fornicating in the streets, killing each other, wow. drinking and getting crazy, and like the the church just outlawed it for a long time. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, I just like the lights and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I got, I got to hand it to you, actually. Even talking to you, seeing you, it's just something about you. I mean, I was there, whatever. But that last year, you really kind of like, it was contagious. You kind of gave me the bug. Yeah. The Christmas bug? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We hung out and stuff like that. And I just, I don't know. And like, even I, I, man, I tell you, even right now, my heart's a little warm thinking about it. Kind of excited. Yeah. Nice <laughs> things. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, you know, I'm a human being. When we drove through <laughs> the, um, the lights display. And it was like synced up. Oh, yeah, the lights. Yeah, the it was lights, yeah. Like, yeah, it was it was really fun. And then and being in Missouri, it's so, being in Kansas City for Christmas is so much better than, than California. Why? Well, seasons. <laughs> uh, that's right. one thing. Winter. Actual winter. winter the, yeah. the other thing is that like there's um, Southern California. Like, I can't speak for Central uh, right. or Northern, but like. They're really, it's just a different vibe 
it's a much more um, kind of down to earth family vibe mm. here. Even going through like Millionaire's Road and stuff like that. Right. Like, like you know, that area uh, of locally here, even that has like a more, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's different. It, it's, it's definitely a much more kind of down to earth vibe, which I, I attribute to the Midwest thing. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I've really come to appreciate it and uh, yeah, I can enjoy it. I, I have to say growing up, my family and extended family, they would always in Cali, they would always, you know, come around for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. It would be the same, you know, the usual suspects, everybody would, we would all get together. We'd usually get together at my parents' house. And that was the, that was the focal point. Cause they had, they had basically bought it from my grandparents. And so we used to get together when it was their house there. Thanksgiving was always a lot more festive and friendly for some reason, Christmas people would get into fights. <laughs> The there would the be past. there Is would be arguments. Dog? There was, I mean, always there's alcohol involved. Yeah, but you know yeah. what else it is too, though, because I also I had one person in particular uh, who also who always gave me trouble. Mm. But this person in particular, when this person was, I think this person has left the state. I hope they have. I hope they're still not here. But. <laughs> Around that time, this person would, you know, their their troubling me would always spike. And that's Mm -hmm. because the holidays, especially for people who are troubled or have a tendency to cause trouble, it it becomes a thing. It agitates their their sense of loss, you know, and I think people wrongly say like, oh, like I get it. You don't have family or you have family and they're terrible. And the holidays are a time when family, people think mm-hmm. of family and all that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But but it's a real strong example from my perspective of the kind of power of suggestion. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because it's not like the full moon where there's like some gravitational pull and then all of a mm-hmm. sudden, whatever. It's just like, this has been suggested. This has kind of been put out there. If people watch movies, they're watching it. It's a wonderful life, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it really is the power of suggestion that, that I think can really cause people to spin out, maybe like your family during this time. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's more, it's like more that stressful that. than Thanksgiving. It's definitely more stressful than Thanksgiving, Christmas as a holiday. Yeah, there's, a lot mean, of ex- there's a lot of expectations. People are like, mm-hmm. they're weighing themselves against other people, against their yeah, yeah. family, financially, yeah, yeah, where yeah, they yeah. are in life, relationship-wise, yeah, yeah. you know, you know all those types of things. I think also, too, people, there's this weird thing, like, there's a dark side to the Christmas thing that isn't the Thanksgiving, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's a whole, what am I getting? What oh, about exactly. me? Exactly. What about my life? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't get this. Or like, oh, the, but just like you said, they compare each other, this and that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I'll tell you what, it, it's just interesting to me because it, like Thanksgiving is forever tarnished for me because my mom died like mm. two days before Thanksgiving. So it's always yeah. it, it, like her ghost is always over that, you know? Mm-hmm. But even, even in light of that, you know, because I try to have a proper association with death now, I'm able to really kind of process it and, and it doesn't, it doesn't get magnified or amplified due to the holiday. Right. Cause I think the nature of Thanksgiving isn't conducive to that. No. Christmas on the other hand, you know, Christmas is like birthdays, Christmas and birthdays, people, they just mm-hmm. decide I'm going to throw a pity party. I feel sorry yep. for myself. Yep. I'm going to misery loves company. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and so it's, there's a real dark side to it. That's, and I mean, yeah. you know, also it is like two weeks before a holy, like a holy, holy day, you know, like mm-hmm. the 25th is generally like coming right before like nativity, mm-hmm. like capital N. Mm-hmm. So like, I think a lot of times there's like this frenzy because people are feeling the angst, the feeling, the spiritual warfare a little bit especially like alcoholics, it's a really hard time for alcoholics, like the, um, the holidays in particular, like Christmas, they're all drinking days and stuff like that. 
So there's this mm-hmm. these strong spiritual, you know, things going on. And uh but also just to throw this in there, Kansas City is the headquarters of Hallmark. And so Hallmark goes pretty hard for Christmas and mm. they do they do a bunch of bunch of bunch of stuff. So to speak to what Father was saying on earlier, there is this like kind of whether it's manufactured or not, whatever, I'm still buying it. This like feeling of like down to earth, home, family, warm, like grandma's in the it's a Nor- Norman Rockwell type of situation. Kind of, yeah. It's it's yeah. manufactured. It's pretty cheap, you know. Um, unless you're able to to make it real, you know. Mm-hmm. But there is like this like feeling of like you know, there, there's this like, there's this warmth there, you know, like the cozy living room. You Which, know, like this that. whole thing is interesting to me because I'm really fascinated about um, like just for the sake of conversation, not for the sake of conversation, but the sake to, the sake of trying to make a distinction. Like, mm-hmm. let's say I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with this thought of something being manufactured versus something developing organically or being created or, you know, kind of being a manifestation of something, right? Like those three, those three tiers, right? Created, mm-hmm. organically developed or, or manifesting something versus something that's been manufactured, right? And this, this whole thing of manufacturing things, whether they be holidays, whether they be kind of like states of being, like that, that's, mm. that's a whole thing, manufactured states of being. Like, I, I'm going to just throw this out there, you know. Um, I did my master's thesis on uh, um, BPD. and Borderline, borderline personality. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and, a heavy one. And it's, it's funny because... You know, one thing's I, I one of the things I discovered is that there's there's a there's obviously there's an uptick, right? So mm-hmm. there's two ways you can read that data. You can read the data, it's always kind of been there, but we didn't have a name for it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you can read the data that there's some sort of um influence that's causing this phenomena to be introduced or replicated in in, in individuals, right? I lean towards mm-hmm. the latter and sure. I, I really kind of, I lean towards the latter. That, that's what I discovered, you know, and looking at um, case studies that also too, huh, there's something to be said about the prevalence of influence through social media. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. and, it, and it's a lot like the phenomena of, um, gender sexuality issues skyrocketing through the influence of like absolutely it's, it's, it's well it's, isn't it almost exclusively women that bpd it doesn't it almost exclusively yeah, affect women? it is it is it's 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 one it's interesting because there are a few cases where it would be male bpt but they tend to fall into npd so they so they they'll put hmm. male so that's narcissistic right correct Correct. Okay. And so there's there's an overlap, but there's some distinctions that one will make because there's also the female narcissist. So there's some mm-hmm. distinctions between a female narcissist, like a covert female NPD versus like BPD. But mm-hmm. the thing I want to kind of get to on this is that there's a this kind of mimetic aspect of it mm-hmm. and, and, and the contagious yep. aspect of it and the fact that it can begin to almost silo and through the silo, like the, the siloing of, of a certain category of, of, of people, you know, first and foremost, like gender and then subsets mm-hmm. within that gender, certain people being susceptible to fall into this pattern, or I would say what I discovered is emulate a certain pattern. Mm-hmm. Not to say that there isn't people who don't suffer from it like directly, but, what I found was there's a strong case that much of it is a product of a, gr- a, a great, a greater level of social suggestion. Yeah. And I find it interesting because 
this whole thing of like manufacturing. So, so in other words, like, mm. <laughs> right. Like I, I think about this a lot. This may seem like a jump. Maybe it's not, I don't know. I think a lot about the fact of like, cause you know, I love kids, whatever I got, mm. you know, whatever eight kids and then like the parish all stuff. But like, what was it like 50 years ago? Right. You know, 60 years ago. What I mean is as long as there's been TV, it's like, there now are these um, children will begin to emulate certain programming. I mean, they program. call them programs. It, it literally, they literally call them programs. <laughs> programming, right? And so it's like you you start to think, well, how much of the human mm. psyche on a more like general level mm. has been kind of corrupted by these manufactured personalities? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's all these weird... Incalculable. Aspects. It's incalculable. It's it, right? And so... It's, yeah. I, I mean, well, Father, I still remember constantly, I'll have jingles of advertisements yeah, yeah. come yeah. into my head that I haven't heard in 30 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah 40 yeah, yeah. years. Like, and they'll come into my head. Every single human being in the Western world has is, we are... You can almost say we're, we're already a different type of human. Long before, long before the little devils were introduced, you know, sure. years ago, mm -hmm. something already began to really try to, you know, affect our, our, our nature, if it was possible, if yeah. that makes sense, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's this manufacturing, right? Because it, 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 see, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem foreign on the onset. That, I mean, that's how it's possible, right? But then you start kind of looking back, and this is this is one of the one of the interesting and more powerful aspects of being in the church, not just like quote unquote joining the institution of the Orthodox Church, but actually being in the church. You know what I mean? Like living according mm -hmm. to the church, struggling, repenting. You begin to now have a, an increasingly clear vision of what humanity should be. As we look to our Holy Mother and we look to our Lord Jesus Christ, who are what humanity should be, we can now then have this reference, a, a, a good, a, a pure reference. And then it's like, whoa, like, <laughs> yeah. God help me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, it, and it's interesting because this thing's been coming up a lot lately in the parish with some individual people and stuff like that. But it was even like, I brought it up in a homily, but there's this, this phenomena of like the fear that we have in the process of our salvation. And it's like this place of what's going to be left of me, you know, this, this fear that. Oh man, I, have I had that one father. Yeah. You, know you can mean? speak on that a little bit. Cause that touches me. That touches me deep. That one goes deep, right? There. Yeah. I mean, the, it's just, it's interesting because. There is this phenomenon where people, I just see it, I see it every day, all day long, not just in parishioners, not just in my own biological kids, but in my own life. And you see where the cross is constantly being put before us. And we so oftentimes struggle in, in the wrong way, not in the good way, in the wrong way with embracing it. And, and what that looks like is, in this context, a real fear of losing one's self. But this, to tie it in what we're talking about, that's why I brought it up, is the interesting thing, though, is that very thing that we're scared of letting go of is the very thing that needs to be burned away. We, we, aren't, we aren't preserving us. We're preserving the, kind, the mask, the shell, the barnacles, the noise, the static all those things that we think are life, you know, like it's, is that the, forgive me, father. Is that the thing that's been, that's been manufactured? That is the thing that's been manufactured because what I was okay. going to say was, what I was just about to say was what I'm finding more and more and more. If I, if, if you were to strip down a young adult to, to, to this kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say in essence, because each successive generation is getting worse, right? So 
what our grand well what your guys' grandparents, my dad would have been or whatever, like that, because my dad was so much older, right? My dad was 20 years older than my mom. Like that, that level, that, that level of a copy is so far removed from like, obviously his dad and his dad, but you start thinking about it and we don't even use Xeroxes anymore really, right? So we don't have, we, this, this analogy doesn't work anymore, but for those who remember, if you have an original, you Xerox it with with each successive Xerox, not of the original, but of each. You know what I mean? It gets it decays more and more and more. So what I'm trying to get at is like with each successive generation, it's like what thread of actual humanity is is left. I mean, I look at myself and just so much of my life are these constructs. Which here's the thing: someone out there is thinking, yes, but it's always been that. Because someone living in the time of like um, Dickens, you know what I mean? They would have had these different cultures, but, but that's not the same because much of that is what we're talking about in regards of organically developed, a manifestation, right? What we're talking about is this created, organically developed or manifested versus manufactured. And I think the big thing is the source and the intent that's how we begin to discern the two because what has what what, const, what the construct what constructs excuse me what constructs us is manufactured because the intent is purely either utilitarian commercial to sell something like so much of think of how much of our lives consisted of gi joe transformers whatever anime that that all of that is manufactured None of that is organic. None of that is created. None of that is a manifestation in, in the sense of a, an actual natural manifestation that doesn't have like nefarious means of like using us, selling goods to us, trying to influence us in a way that is to pull us away from our calling of salvation to be human beings made in the image of God. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's well, Father, like, Father, like mean. especially you bringing up G.I. Joe and Transformers, because those cartoons were specifically made to sell the toys. Right. The toys were created first, then they created the cartoons. Right. To, to, like you said, to, to, sell, make to sell the toys as an That's advertisement right. for the toys. That's right. So just, just think about, I mean, even to this day, there's certain, there's certain fragments that are like in the cultural lexicon, you know, knowing is half the battle. That comes from G.I. Joe. That, that comes from G.I. Joe. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's just interesting to me because Christmas, like all these things, you know, the, the, it, it's, it could, <laughs> what does St. Paisio say? If I didn't know the Lord would have the last word, everything I, everything I see would drive me insane. You know, it's like, if you didn't know that the only way to get out of this is to anchor yourself to the rock, which is Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? And his church, it's like, forget it, man, because the rabbit hole of just how insane and false this whole world is in our lives, really. Our lives are, 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 everyone's life has been a shadow for sure and vanity, but how much more so now? You know what I mean? It's like, we're not even just shadows, we're digital shadows. <laughs> like, like that's, how, that's how false we are, or we're, we're digital shadows. You know what I mean? There's literally people who get paid a good amount of money more than I make to play video games online so people can watch them. Yeah. That's just yeah, let's like, play let's play videos. I get caught yeah. in I get caught in those sometimes. I mean, if one fun. of them will show up on my YouTube and I don't even play games. <laughs> I'm not even a game I'm not even a gamer. I, so, but it's like, oh this is interesting. And I'll sit and watch. And then I'll be yeah. like, what did I just do for what the last forty five minutes? I've wa watched somebody play Why did I contribute twenty five dollars to this person? Why did Digital I do that? I um, <laughs> So, so it's funny that you bring this up, Father, because last night I was having a conversation. There's li little little group, little group locals and uh, mainlanders and whatnot to get together Thursday nights and talk about whatever. And uh, this gentleman is a he's a professional direct marketing copywriter. So he writes like copy for, you know, emails, basically spam emails for the for the most part. And it, it's, it's interesting that you bring this up because. In our conversation, 
you know, we're talking about what he does. We're talking about like the the methodology of it, you know, and then also like, well, how would you market a specific thing? Like, how do you tell the story? How do you do all of this? And it's just like. It because it I, I'm seeing now, like the conversation that we had, you know, because I told him I'm not good at any of these things. I'm not good at manufacturing narratives. I'm good at like. I can talk to you with with feeling about the things that are like legitimately happening to me, but I'm very bad at man manufacturing these things. But it's I, I saw how. I think once you travel down that path and there was a, a point in my life when I was traveling down that path, when I was on reality TV and it's like and I recognized it in myself, I'm recognizing it, it now, but there was this weird feeling that I was having last night. And I think it was reminiscent of that, that like your mind actually, you actually become a tool of whatever it is that's manufacturing. Like you don't know that you're a tool, but like it's, it's like you've been programmed and then your mind starts to operate in such a way of how can I program others? It's like you become a, a means of, it's very different than just like mimetic sort of somebody copying you. It's almost like you're actively wanting to participate in this manufacturing of a narrative that you know is cynically, you know, it is a manufactured narrative to then get somebody to believe it so that then they will become the person who cynically manufactures the narrative. Very, very weird. Not and, really. and people, people don't, but people don't, I, don't think I feel like weird, people don't though. do that. I don't think no, it's that weird. weird. I think that this gets into part of, Okay. If I if I completely end up in the Amazon, someone's got to roll me back, right? So I was doing, you know, I, I was doing a whole thing this week, and, and I'm always doing this, by the way. I'm always looking. I'm trying. I'm always trying to look at things and trying to the best of my ability, you know, with God's help to to see like how does this correlate in the in the tradition, right? So let me, so let me an example. So, like I said, I, I'm, you know, I did my thesis on uh, BPD, whatever. And so because of other things, you know, I've been, I've been doing a little bit of a, a dive on MPD, right? And like, what is, like, trying to <clears throat> not wrap my mind around what the, the what the secular clinicians say because that's one thing, not what the popular culture says, because that's another thing. They can overlap, but they're not the same thing, right? Because what clinicians say versus how people interpret it um, and sometimes even weaponize the term, they don't always correlate, right? But what does those two things, as well as the actual phenomena insofar as like how I've experienced and how it's clinically defined, like what is it, right? And good, good, good question. And so one thing that I'm, and this is, we're, we're talking now. So like, this is, this is one of those actual things you're like, oh yeah, I forgot we're doing a podcast, but like, I, I, no one can run with this, even though it's out there, but one of the things I'm speculating right now, but there is this weird twisted inverted kenosis that happens with it. So kenosis, right? Kenosis is this um, emptying of self, right? What, this is what Christ does. Christ emptied himself, full, you know, out of love, this sacrificial emptying of himself for, the, for, for our salvation, right? Well, the hypostatic principle, you know, as St. Sophroni talks about, and just if you understand, if you have this kind of, framework in which Christ is the new Adam, right? Christ, he, if you want to know what it means to be a human being, you look to Christ. Thus, in the life of a believer, part of the theosis that our theotic experience is we will pass through these um, these gospel narratives in our life, right? You following me? And in doing that, not only do we partake in the fellowships, not, do we, not only do we partake in fellowship in the suffering, sufferings of Christ, but we do so with, with, 
with Adam, with, with all men, right? With this human, human nature as it has been sanctified, saved in Christ. Are you following me so far? Is it that our suffering, our suffering is what makes us human? In Christ? In Christ. In we Christ? Suffer, yes. Yes. Okay. 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 So with that, though, there are these inverted movements also, right? Because the demonic is always looking to not simply just mimic, but to mock, right? Are you following me? So one of the things that I've been observing with like NPD, let's say, is there is this depleting that happens but the depletion, it, it's weird. The depletion that happens, it happens to the person that's attached to the person that has NPD. So it's almost like this vampiric thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, but here's the thing. This is what I'm getting at. But the person who's caught in that loop, they, they stay stuck in that loop because what the vampiric quality of the of the person with NPD or whatever, which I want to get a whole nother, like, like a, a proper term for it, but it's activating this canonic phenomena in a person. So in other words, do, do you, do you see it? Do you see it? You so, see so it? father, so father, are you saying that it's like, a? it's worship? It's, it's like, yeah, it's like a stand. It's somehow it's triggering something that a relationship with Christ would trigger but in correct. like a but it's inverted it's, it's, it's perverted inverted. correct so it's attaching to the same receptor you would say almost correct. like a, a drug thing if you're going to use a brain analogy correct. right correct correct oh, because weird. that phenomena of emptying oneself right that canonic experience which every christian that and when i say christian I think everyone knows what I mean, but I'm just, I have to be explicit right now because there's so many people who they're not Christians, but they say they are. Let's just forgive me. I'm just going to say like, they have no idea. Like we're not talking about them. I'm, I mean, every authentic real Christian will experience this, right? You, you like it's, if you are a Christian, if, you're, if you are designed to be united to Christ, you, you will experience this on some level, right? I see where you're going. I see where you're going, Father. Yeah, this is interesting. So what's interesting is that we keep thinking sometimes about the, about the structure of the AC being like always so high, top, 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 top. And like that final movement is for sure, right? Capital T, capital A, capital C, all like uppercase. Okay, great. But what's happening on the lower level, right? Because remember something. We are the body of Christ, like, right? <laughs> Can I get it? Is anyone with me? I, you, you yeah, I, I am, I am, I am, follow, I am following you. And this is something that I had not, I had not thought about this, but it makes, please continue father. Cause this, like, this like, actually makes a lot of sense. Like if you, okay. We are the body of Christ. Right, we we are his manifestation here on this on this plane of existence. Are you following me? Okay. But Christ, is, we're not talking about the Christ consciousness. We're not we're not South African Satanists, right? We're, we we are we are Orthodox Christians. We understand that there is the Christ, the chosen one, the Messiah, the only one. Right. That's what the creed is. Right. That's who we're confessing. Right. And we're his body. Are you following me? Okay. Well, a person, a person, the, the, a person, a person, a person, the person. Jesus yes. Christ, right? The logos, the second person of the Holy Trinity. Okay. Well, there's an anti, not only to him, but there's an anti also to his body. Right. And so this real, this canonic experience that if you are in his body, you will experience if you're truly in his body, right? Think of how few people really want to be in the body of Christ. Really. Millions and millions and millions of people say I'm a Christian, but like, eh, whatever. I know it's judgmental. 
or it seems like it is, but it's not, right? Narrow is the path. Forgive me. The trade-offs. They don't want the trade-offs. They don't want the trade-offs. The trade-offs. But you yeah. know what? This kind of weird, perverted, inverted sense of giving yourself this kind of weird, perverted mockery of this canonic experience, this is something that I'm, I'm speculating. It's all speculation. But I see a mirroring in this with this vicious dynamic that you find when people are locked in these terrible, abusive relationships. You see what I'm saying? And it's funny because then if you begin to now scale that up and you've got whole societies functioning on this, right? Because even in that, it becomes this weird inverted hierarchy. Because here's the thing, right? People, I think sometimes I have, right? I've mistakenly thought that society as we understand it, secular society, modern society is fundamentally anti-hierarchical. I don't actually, I'm, I'm, I'm walking that back actually. It still is. It's just that the, uh, the hierarchy is often inverted, right? You know, the devouring mother instead of the, instead of the tyrant, like whatever that's going to be. But it's like, it's not a, so much about destroying nature. It's about perverting it. Yeah, if the evil yes. one can destroy something, great. But fundamentally, the greater thing sometimes is the mocking and, and, the, and the perversion, right? Because this is what happens in the garden, right? And so what you brought up about what you observed with people wanting to kind of replicate that, I don't think it's that actually like, I think that this gets into something which is demonic in the sense that it's trying to access some sort of, it, it, it's getting back to some sort of idolatrous state, right? Create like power, creating like all those things, but it, it's, it's not in synergy relationship to the living God. It's, it's, it's in light of oneself and it's in light of the fallen world with, with the sensual experiences of things. Do you, does that make sense what I'm saying? I'm getting the, um, what's kicking off to me is when I have heard, like, let's say, like, uh, biochemists or, like, people who, who work in sort of um, neurochemistry or any of these things, you know, these classic, like, TED Talks that they'll give, where they'll talk about the thing that they've said over and over is, like, cocaine accesses the same neuroreceptors and you get the same brain activity as, like, love. Mm -hmm. Where they would be like, they would show somebody the, a mm -hmm. picture of someone that they were madly in love with mm -hmm. and measure their brain. They'd give them cocaine and measure their brain and they'd be like, look, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, this is why somebody would become addicted to cocaine to the point where they would do so much cocaine that they'd kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Like to where, where they just have a heart attack from it and die. Like totally common. Happens all the time. And this is giving. But obviously so, so this goes kind of to the idea where it's like, oh, well, these people want to be in love. But then to, to the point that you're saying about people not wanting to be in the body of Christ, it's like, no, actually, I've known quite a few people who, who were cokeheads. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to be in love. Mm -mm. They didn't want the trade off. Mm -mm. Right. They didn't. They were like, no, no, no. I'm not about love. Give me that cocaine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because well, the trade off of love was too much for them. Well, what's interesting is you could also argue it's not counter to what you're, it's not antithetical what you're arguing. It's a different perspective. Of it. You can mm -hmm. argue that they did want love in the sense of, you know, you could be like, hey man, I don't eat meat, whatever. And you just eat nothing but Taco Bell burritos. Okay. Right. We've all, we all know that guy. We all know what happens to him. You know what I mean? Yep. But at the end of the day, his body's craving protein. You, you see what I'm yep. saying? And so, he just chooses to, to, for whatever reason, to not get the protein as he probably mm -hmm. should. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in that, in, in that same kind of argument, the cokehead, he really does want, he needs love. Let's put it, he doesn't want it. He needs right. it. He needs right. that love. But because, you know, because of what we are, right, he can override that and be like, I know, like, I want this and he can choose those wants. Cause here's the thing. This is also what you're talking about. This is why we're at where we're at. That's why there's so many, so many materialists, including plenty of people in churches who are actually materialists, right? They're not, they're not actually Christians because 
they subscribe to this idea that ultimately you're kind of just like a bag of chemicals anyways. You know what I mean? And if they go to church, it's because they were raised that way or because they're moralists. And it's like, well, this is what you do to like get along with everyone else, to network so you can have a job, blah, blah, blah. Like there's plenty of people like that, right? So, but they're, but they're still functioning off of these, to be frank, I mean, just this principles of nature. Because here's the mm-hmm. thing. The, the cocaine lighting up the same sensory areas of love, is that a thing? Of course it is. Because that's how God designed us. Because we are your soul and body, right? And, and those things are meant to function together in unison. So, yeah. That, but because we have been given free will, right? We can choose to bypass certain things and just, you know, for, forget, forget God, forget real love, which means self-sacrifice, care for the other, you know, denial of self, and just give me the goodies. People do it. Most people do that, in fact. Not even like some people. Most people, that's how they define love, whether they're cokeheads or not. You know what I mean? Oh, Father, you, you know, this is like, you said the garden, but it's like, yeah, this goes full circle to the garden. Like, this is exactly what's going on in the garden. And also this idea of, yeah, we, we are made for a relationship with God, a person, mm-hmm. a right? Person. Because it's God is a person in the garden. He That's made right. us to have a relationship with a person. Yes. Everything about and, us is created to do that. Yes. Like, 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 every, like all the amazing things about human beings. God created us that way because he's, because he's God. And so what that means is <laughs> even as amazing as we are, it's, it's still so, it's still like not enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, but, but it's still so amazing because the, the reality, the reality of God and, and our ability to comprehend and to experience it, it, it takes all that we got. And, and plus more, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Our, our, our spiritual and physical senses, they encompass the invisible and the invisible. This is what reality is. That's why God created us, right? But we can take all those things and we can love something else ourselves, you know? Well, if the narcissist, so, so the idea, this is, a, this is an interesting and in my own experience, I mean, I, I had I was in a relationship with uh, a woman who definitely I mean, even diagnosed with uh, BPD, which is one of the craziest experiences I've ever had in my life. Like that period of my life doesn't actually seem real. So this thing that you're talking about, this kenosis, there were definitely aspects of that that were occurring with me for sure. I saw myself becoming a, a shell, a shell, really. yeah. a shell. Yeah. and it, it, it is interesting because it's like the NPD or BPD person, you know, is like kind of manifesting this like self-worship, mm-hmm. whereas the person who's with them is actually worshiping them in the place of Christ. Like mm-hmm. they're filling in because they have the victim aspect to them, right? Mm-hmm. That they're the eternal victim. And then it's like, oh, I need to draw closer to them. I need to love them. If I would just love them more then the world would be right. Like... Mm-hmm. All of this, and yet there's, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it gets really twisted, right? It gets really mm-hmm. twisted because it begins to even play on the ego of the person. Yes. Right? Because that yes. person begins to feel a Christ-like, you know what I mean? A false Christ-like, like, I need to give myself more, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so you find yourself giving of yourself in this weird antichrist way, but yes. it's twisted because ultimately you end up worshiping that that person, right? Yes. Do you, you see what yes. I'm saying? And it, it, it's, yes. it's very, very, very twisted. And, and it's, a, it's a snapshot of, of what the world in, what the world in the throes of demonic influence looks like. You see what I'm saying? And because, AI, oh, wow. AI could get really dangerous in this regard. Look, man. Look, man. The uh, ones that talk, the artificial yeah, intelligence yeah. ones that look like a person and they talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because 
something else I've been observing lately, and I know mm. people may roll their eyes at it. You know something that I'm really concerned about? I'm really concerned about this, actually. The, the advent, and I, I, I honestly have not looked at any metrics on its popularity, but um, tele mental health. Yeah. And here's what I mean. That's going to be AI. I don't, I don't just mean tele mental health tell you mental health like you know because i i have i have friends you know spiritual children who are mental health professionals and they do that that's i'm not talking about them i'm talking about the kind of like uh although although that is the on-ramp to it that is mm-hmm. the on-ramp to it i'm talking about the digital like hey that that digital helper that digital clinician which it's not a you're saying a, a non-human a non-human an, alg- an algorithm yes yeah that's something that's because I, i'll tell you why once once you kind of you know i'm not trying to take anybody's bread out of their mouth but once you kind of understand certain patterns this is why you can get like i, I can tell you real quickly you know the difference between a successful clinician and a non-successful clinician right the successful clinician knows the patterns and doesn't get in the way. An unsuccessful clinician either A, doesn't know the patterns or knows the patterns and they're so sick they get in the way. Does that make sense? Once you know the patterns, once you know the schema, once you know the patterns, right? And once you have a, once you have a real foundation of, of the makeup of, of the human, right? It, it, it becomes not easy, but it becomes simple to help people. Are you following me? That's why people go like, oh, there could never be something like AI for mental health, baloney. Because people's, people's struggles on that level are so simple. Typically speaking, are there always outliers? Yes. Are there always anomalies? Yes. But the general person who's struggling with X, Y, and Z, right? If you know the pattern, and if you know the basic makeup of, of human beings, it's fairly simple to help them, right? If the person wants to be helped, that's the other portion of it too. And a lot of times when people go to see a clinician, they just want the time with someone. I mean, to be frank, it's nothing that an actual friend who has a measure of like self-awareness and, and just a drop of actual altruism can't help you with. Right. That, that, that's just like a reality. You know what I'm saying? So and a lot of it, times they just need to talk it out. Well, that's, what out. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That that's all it is. Right. Like not, that's not all that it is. I don't want to make it too simple, but for, for the point of this, this AI thing is like a real concern because it is not far fetched. It is not far fetched. And, and, and what's the function? Hmm? And, and well, and also the problem I think with the algorithms is always like, what's the function, right? Because if you have a clinician, a successful clinician might really be like, really, my goal is to never see you again. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. That's really that's really my goal. That's right. But that that's comes right. from compassion. That's right. Right. But that's when right. you have a machine, especially it's algorithms. And so it's like, well, no, it's about engagement. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's about engagement. Well, if it's about engagement, I, I'm not going to fix you all the way, or I might even introduce, I fixed this thing, but I might introduce something else mm-hmm. into the mix that gets you coming back. Mm-hmm. Because really, really what it is, is you're like, oh, I need this thing. Mm-hmm. I need this, th-, right? And that's, I think that that's like the, the corrupt mental health professional is the person that addicts their clients to them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's another thing too. There are, there are subsects. They're kind of not around as much. I don't know. Maybe they are, but it's a really big thing. There's a certain, there's a certain culture that came out of a certain um, jurisdiction and a certain seminary um, that really in the States that really had this kind of like very, anti-monastic and a very kind of like anti approach to like spiritual fatherhood and eldership. And they would, they would cite these quote unquote abuses that happened, 
you know, apparently in the 20th century, 19th century, uh, and getting into like, just like the later years of the 18th century of Holy Russia, like those, those three decades of like, you know, elder abuse, whatever, right? And this culture facilitates this idea um, that like all of that is, is, is not necessary, right? Having an elder spiritual father, right? Because the potential for it to become guruism and all that stuff. Okay, so, so I'm just putting that out there that that exists, okay? That this perspective exists. And it doesn't exist necessarily for no reason, right? Because you can get people, everyone's tempted to it, tempted by it. I mean, my godson, you guys remember uh, Nikolai, we had him on the show however long ago. He'll tell you so many, if not like all the yogis, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what they do. They, they, they feed off of this kind of, you know, um, they feed off this cycle of a relationship, right? It's but worship, isn't it? It's, it's worship. worship. But but here's the trick. A, a real spiritual father is always trying to point you to Christ, right? And so, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'll just say, you know, if you, if you have a spiritual father or if you have a spiritual father that sometimes you get mad at him because you feel like he's not giving you attention or because you feel like he's, trying to kind of like get away from you or point you somewhere, you should probably go like, oh, this spiritual father actually is looking out for me. This spiritual father is not really trying to just be there for me to, he's not trying to feed off of me. You, you, should, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm bringing that up because that's the thing. Like you could get some unscrupulous Rasputin-like character probably who, who's into that, right? But a, a real spiritual father is, is, is a sheepdog, ultimately. And he knows he's a sheepdog. He knows he's not the shepherd. He's a sheepdog. He's trying to keep you in the herd, in the fold, to, to get you to the shepherd, which is Christ, right? That's, that's the difference, right? And so one of the problems is that when, when, that, when that is lost, when, when that vision is lost either by the person who's being helped, whether it's a clinician or, you know, a godfather, a friend, a spiritual father, when that vision is lost, you got real problems. And I'll tell you why, not just because of like, you know, um, yes, cult of personality is a problem. Yes, gurism is a problem. All that stuff is there. But the real problem is, is that you now are being severed from the source that can actually bring you healing and integration of your personhood. And once that happens, excuse me, once that happens, the least of your problems are the thing that you originally coming them for, because that, that problem that you initially started coming to that person for, that is now going to be a gateway in which you could potentially be giving rights to the fallen ones. That that's that. Well, can we dig into that a little bit? Can we dig into that? So, so I'm coming with the problem, but because I'm cut off, because I'm pointed in the wrong direction, how does, how does that, because, because now I'm worshiping something that I shouldn't be worshiping? What, because, how, how, what's happening? Because what's happening is, A, number one, obviously, if we're not being connected to the source, which is Christ, Right. He is the source of life, right? And he gives life and life abundant. So he gives you true life. He doesn't give you the kind of life that makes you feel good. He gives you the kind of life that allows you to live, right? He doesn't give you Taco Bell meat. He doesn't give you cricket protein. He gives you, like, the real stuff, whatever, okay? That's, that's A number one, sure. That's easy. But here's the thing that people often miss. You can actually begin now to not only like lose that connection to the source of life, but you can begin to actually get a taste for something else. And that, and that taste for something else, right? That's what, that's what leads you because all the virtues are connected. They're, they're all chained together, but so are all the passions, right? And so when you start to get a taste for something else, you begin to crave that. And if you're in a terrible situation, 
where the person who's supposed to be helping you is facilitating that, well, that's an open gateway now because you begin to become, if you will, almost addicted to that thing. And that addiction, especially if it's in the context of this quote unquote spiritual relationship, it becomes not just toxic, it becomes primer for a demonic experience. Because remember something, remember something. He, here's the thing that people, I, I think people don't understand this about the demonic. Yes, you can get, I mean, all kinds of people get demonically influenced, obsessed, possessed, you know, whatever degree. But there's a particular, uh, I don't want to use the word sweetness. There's, there's something for those who would be Christ, there's a particular danger, if you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, the devil's happy to have, you know, fill in the blank, whatever secular person, Joe Rogan, like whatever, you know what I mean? No problem, whatever. It's like, doesn't he need to bother, really? Because, the, like, you know what I mean? He's, he's got him. He's already he's got, got him already. And, and he, yeah. he's, he's of the world, right? But... If you can get someone who, not, who should not only be pursuing Christ, but actually repenting, right, then, then there's a, a real sweet catch, right? And so when a person is not hooked up to the source, right, not only can they get a taste for something else, but it completely, not completely, God forgive me, I don't want to be too hyperbolic it can really begin to erode the means by which repentance is possible. You understand what I'm saying? And that's where it gets really dangerous because that, that's the key in regards of facing the demonic, right, is repentance. Like an exorcism starts with confession, right? If, if, if someone comes to me and they're like legitimately – troubled by demonic influence like legitimately right first thing is 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 confession right because if there's no confession then there's there's nothing there's nothing you can do because those demons you know they they will quote unquote claim rights because it's like well this person's let me be here and, and inhabit this space you see what i'm saying and this is super important because all of these things we've been talking about getting all the way back to the beginning of the conversation the manufactured culture, all of these things, right? They all become little nooks and crannies by which these influences hide behind. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? They, they, they're, they are, they're houses for the demons. They're houses for demons. They aren't, yeah. they aren't the demons themselves. Yeah. They're the houses. They're the things that they're hiding behind. And so mm -hmm. this, is, this is why people make the mistake. It's like, we're kind of inferring and, and hinting at it earlier in conversation, mm. but it's, it, it has to be the whole person. It isn't just the spiritual. Cause like the spiritual wasn't, well, when we say spiritual, when we say spiritual here, I think, I feel like I said this before. When we say spiritual here, I mean, Orthodox, what that means is the spiritual means the whole of the person, not just mm -hmm. the immaterial aspect of it. That that's Gnosticism. <laughs> you hear know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. the psychological processes, which are fueled by the, the, the responses that have been habituated in your life. That's just as much a part of your spiritual life as your moral, your, your, your moral inclinations. All of those things are what constitute you as a human being. And all those things can either A, lead to the worship of God or lead to the enslavement of the passions and you know what fat falls the passions of the demons, right? Like thoughts, like thoughts are followed by illusions. Illusions are followed by passions. Passions are followed by demons. Boom, 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 right? You get all those put together, you got yourself a sandwich. And it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. And it takes that. That's why a lot of people may or may not like, it depends mostly, you know, spiritual children, but, you know, I talk a lot about the, the problem with clinicians and with the contemporary mental health industry 
because it's so secular and atheistic, it doesn't take an account for the mm-hmm. spiritual and even really at this point, the moral, to be frank. Um, and thus it, 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 it only perpetuates a different kind of sickness. It may, it may give some, it may give some mitigation to like symptoms, but it doesn't really get to the, because it can't integrate a whole person because a person can only be truly integrated in Christ. I know that's a bold statement, but if you're a Christian, that's what you believe. <laughs> you know what I mean? There is no integration outside of, outside of God. Right. So if there's no integration outside of God, then what else is there? There is the integration within the demonic. You know what I mean? And this that- is really, this is father. This is like, you've just basically broken down my experience with ayahuasca. This was my relationship with ayahuasca is like, especially the part, you know, especially the idea that there is no exorcism without confession or the, the, the prerequisite or the precursor to an exorcism is confession. It's, and it's like, I look at the practice of ayahuasca and this idea of giving demons rights, right? I look at the practice of ayahuasca. I look at generally the people and myself. I mean, I think I was very much about it as like a psychonaut or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, although I, you know, I had things, but I think I was actively trying to seek out a relationship with, the, with it, this entity more than find healing. Mm-hmm. But I think that the narrative around it, certainly the group that I was a part of, that seemed to be virtuous, right? That from the outside seemed very virtuous. That like all these people that I was around and probably in my, you know, in my experience, I sat with probably hundred, at least a hundred or more people on different occasions, right? So different people. So many of them, I mean, were coming for healing, tr- past trauma, even PTSD, some mm-hmm. of them, mm-hmm. um, depression, these sorts of things, and kept coming back because they would get some degree of healing from it. And those were the people who would say why they were there, because there were plenty of people who, you know, you'd sit around and talk before and after. There were plenty of people who were not sharing why they were there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Plenty of those people. And you knew whatever that was, was really serious. hmm. Right. Those are the people where it was really serious. So it's like, but that experience of. Yeah, but the, the, the spirit of ayahuasca, you basically give her rights to go as deep as she can oh. into you. I mean, and then she's going to do whatever. But it's like what you're saying. I'm just like, oh, my that's it. Forgive it's a, me, it's a, forgive, <laughs> forgive me. I just want to say this because gonna, I'm going to lose it if I, if I don't say it right. And I just want to say it because something we talk a lot about here too, right? Let's just be really, really, really super clear about something here. Because this came up recently with someone. I'm just like, I haven't had a chance to talk to this person one-on-one. I don't know if I'm going to, but let's just be really clear for all everyone out there, right? <laughs> Uh, the demons not only can, but they do manufacture, getting back to that term, manufacture experiences. So it's like a broken window theory, right? Andrew the Glazier just had a baby. He needs to make a little bit of cash. Oh, wow. So Andrew the Glazier, he says, Hey, check it out. Tommy, Aaron, and Micah, I'm going to give you guys 50 bucks. Here's a couple masks. You go out and you make sure you break some windows three in the morning. Nine o'clock the next morning, ring, ring, ring. Andrew the Glazier's got a ton of business, right? Okay. You... (laughs) Behold, even the devil comes with an angel light. People can and have been afflicted with a certain, have been afflicted, right? With something that the person who's afflicted discerns or they've been told, this is, a, this is of a spiritual nature, which you've afflicted with, right? And it can be orchestrated in such a sense that's like, you know, you can go to the priest, but the priest is like, hey, X, Y, Z, and you may not want to say X, Y, Z. So you'll go down to the local ashram 
and be like, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, hey, I'm relieved of this thing, right? Of course you are. So, so mission accomplished. You've now given your allegiance over to a greater demon because the lesser one has, you know, you didn't have the taste for, for the struggle with the lesser demon. You've turned to the greater one, right? It doesn't even have to be that extreme, although that, that's what happens, right? That literally what happens. It can be as easy as like, hey, uh, you know, I'm struggling with the demon of gluttony, but I'd rather give myself over to the demon of pride, you know what I mean, and, and, and defeat it that way. Point being is, without real repentance, you're just, you're just digging yourself deeper into this nest, if you will. You're just, giving, you're just making yourself more and more susceptible, and that's why repentance is the only way. Every other way just leads you further and further into the webs and the machinations, the machinations, right? That term of the devils, because these things are, these, these things are manufactured. They're traps. St. Paisius, he calls them 666 traps. Like the flies call them traps. They're, they are manufactured specifically to entrap human souls. And people don't understand this, right? But once, once you kind of like get this, then you, this, listen, this is why whether, no matter who you are, clergy, layman, monastic, male, female, whatever, all of us, we need to do the same thing, which is seek radical repentance. It is the only way out because everything else just immerses you and enmeshes you in, all, in, in, in this, in this mire. Does that, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's um, first off that my mind is blown right now. Like I have a whole other understanding of, let's say t- a 10 year period of my life right now. Um, th- this idea of, it's like problem, reaction, solution at the celestial, celestial level. Mm-hmm. You know, this, it, it does make total sense to me. And even so very strange that like, even the organizer who is now a shaman, but who at the time was an organizer of, uh, you know, this ayahuasca group and brought in all these different shamans and everything would say things like, oh yeah, this is, somebody would say something. She'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's ayahuasca calling you. Like she's like, bef- mm-hmm. way before she's like, oh no, 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 no. She'll call you. Mm-hmm. She'll call you. Mm-hmm. Like before you knew ayahuasca existed, before any, oh, that's her calling you, mm-hmm. right? Which is very much an inversion of Christ, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very much an inversion. But it's like now that's taking on a whole new and a whole new understanding of like how these demonic things that are standing in the way. And also this idea of like, you know, I would always tell people like, oh, yeah, here's this trauma, whatever this trauma. And then ayahuasca and then, oh, you go and you like try to feel the trauma and you're like, oh, it's gone. But now I'm seeing that like, no, that's the trick. The demon just went to a different house Mm -hmm. because it's not like my life got better overall. Mm -hmm. Like net net. There was like, oh, here's a new problem. Mm -mm. Where did this new problem come from? And then it's like, oh, no, I'm going to go deal with that. And oh. Here's this, other, and every time they would get bigger and bigger and bigger, the problem would get bigger and bigger and bigger, mm-hmm. right? And and my my grip on myself would get more and more tenuous. Yeah, listen, man. Time. Listen, you want to know a secret? Christ doesn't lead us. Doesn't lead us. Um. Over, around, under. He leads us through. Right. He who desires to fall after me must pick up his cross daily, right? He doesn't say, hey, you know, let's try to figure something out. <laughs> There's no figuring anything out, man. St. John Glamagus, the way that the wound goes in is the way that it has to come out. Like, this is the one of the big differences, right? No, honey. Mm-mm. You're okay. Of course you feel this way. You know what? Anyone who went through what you went through, They'd be doing the same thing, honey. No. Listen. You know what I mean? That, whereas, if that's what everyone's been fed, which is that is what they've been fed, when the voice of Christ comes and says, 
Lo, though you go through the shadow of the valley shadow of death, you know what I mean? Fear no evil. That's the way of the cross, right? I will be with, I will be with you even until the end of the age. That's the promise of the Lord is I'll be with you. Not that you're going to get out of it. Not that you're going to get around it. I'll be with you. Right. That's, that's, that right there is the full stop, man. <laughs> that's, you understand what I'm saying? That's the full stop right there. Everything else is antichrist. You know what I mean? Everything else is antichrist. That's why, listen, listen, that's why when some people, like, you know, there's some legitimacy when you hear stuff, people, you hear some people from the old world and stuff like that, they talk about Americans like, ah, you know, America's an orthodoxy, blah, blah, blah. You know why? Because Americans can't handle this stuff. Americans don't want priests. They don't want confession. Americans want a therapist to kind of pat them on the back. You know what I mean? Write them a script. Hey, man, God, you know, good luck, whatever. That's, that's what people, like, that's not it, though. That is the road to hell. That, and, and you know what? Everyone who's, everyone who's spent any time, you know I'm telling the truth. You know I am. You know I am, right? Because eventually, I'm going to tell you something. Even if you get some relief from your symptoms, you still will have to face it. See, this is the thing. That trauma, that whatever, that's going to be the way that you actually find liberation. I'm sorry. That that's just, you know what I mean. Well, this is the story. Of the, this is the story of since 2020, Father. Right? It's like instead of going through it, right? Instead of saying, "Okay, here's this thing," <laughs> right? Here's this thing. So, so what do we need? We need to be healthy. So instead of saying, "Let's be as healthy as we possibly can," mm -hmm. right? To move through this thing and you know, to take care of one another as we move through this thing. First off, if that would have been the case, we would have realized it wasn't even a thing to start with, mm -hmm. right? There wasn't actually a thing there. But it's just like, no, no, no. How quickly can we get a shot? Mm -hmm. how, qu how quickly can we get something to stick in people's arms? Mm -hmm. How quickly can we get something that, that people can swallow? How quickly, even from the secular side, hey, man, right? even from the Joe Rogan side. Listen, give him a talisman. The give him a talisman. Yeah. Everyone knows the mass didn't do any. Let's forgive me. I know this is yep. old hat, but yep. the, what the mass did, it was a talisman that yep. gave people a sense of I'm doing something. Listen, I remember, I'll never forget, because Andrew will testify to this. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bragging. I'm not proud of it. It's kind of embarrassing. And the only reason why things turned out the way they did is because of Jesus being faithful and Papadia. But I was just like scratching my head. I know what the heck was going on with people. And I'll never forget. There was a certain, a certain woman who she was, she brought up this thing about like, we got to do our part. And I was like, what, I, what is that? I, I wasn't being cynical. I wasn't being funny. I literally was like, what does that mean? Do our part. I, 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 I didn't understand it. You know what I mean? And then I rem I'll never forget, I saw her, right? And she was, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. Like, I, I'm, I'm just telling you how it was. And I remember, I heard this, like, what? And then I saw her in her car with the windows rolled up with the mask on. And I was like, I, I, I was scratching my head. And I went and I, and I was like, what is this? And then my wife just kind of like broke it down. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't cued in to all the talking points in that same way. And then I was like, what? And so it was this whole, like people wanting to have some weird world war II do your part type of thing. You know what I'm saying? But, but it was, it was all a talisman. It was all something to give a quick, anything to avoid going through it. And, it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual medicine, isn't it? It's a salve it was in a, a way. It was, it was a talisman. But, but for, for, for greater meaning, right? Because what was the real sickness? The real sickness was, right. I, I, don't, I have no meaning in my life. Bingo. That was the real sickness. Bingo. Bingo. And, 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 that's, and that was the thing where I was like, whoa. And at the time, you know, hindsight's 2020, haha. Mm -hmm. But... Like I, I didn't, I didn't really understand that.
at that mm-hmm. moment. You know what I mean? I'm just dealing with like, hey, this person's like living with me. Well, but because you have meaning in your life, Father. I mean, because Christ, Christ is the meaning in our yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but here's the thing: this person, this is part of what tripped me out. This person, mm-hmm. I thought, also had meaning in their life. That that's my right. point, right? right. This, this person had been raised in the church. This person had been in the church longer than I had. You know what I'm saying? You, you mm-hmm. see what I mean? That that's why I was like, that's what was so baffling to me. Was like, but why maybe are- that's the evidence, Father. Forgive me, but maybe that's the maybe that's the evidence that like, no, maybe you don't actually have this relationship with Christ. You know, maybe not not you, but maybe the person who yeah. needs that. Maybe maybe this person doesn't have the relationship. Maybe they're there. Maybe God they're, they're there now. You God, know? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But at the time, it was really odd. But looking back, I can to to your point, which is why I brought it up. It was just anything but going through the thing. Yes. Anything to avoid the cross, whatever, whether it's going to be well, pain, if that- we wear the masks, we won't have to go through the thing. If yeah. we shut down, we won't have to go through the thing. If we put something in our arms, we won't have to go through the thing. Like the whole situation was we don't want to go through the thing. And it's like, no, we're going through the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the thing is here. We're going through the thing. So like, yeah, yeah, that's ultimately that's what it was all about. You and the promise. What was the promise always? The promise was always like, well, if you if you do this, then you won't, uh, you know, get infected. Okay, that was a lie. If right. you do this, then you're right. You won't get seriously ill. Okay, that was right. a lie. Was okay, a lie. it's like if you do Which this, you won't. Like all of this turned out to be lies, but it's but that's the manifest. This so this goes full circle to this idea of this marketing, right? Of it's like how is this thing sold? How was it manufactured? And then the terrible part about it is that what it did was it gave all of these people, okay, here's this first thing. We're going to shut down for two weeks. That means we don't have to go through it. Okay, so then the whole time through that, don't go through it. We Oh, I'm not going to have to go through it. This will be over in two weeks. Then it's like here. Oh, then once we have the poke. Oh, then once we have this. And still these folks have never... So I I guess this is the repentance, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, this this is the like... Yeah, I, 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 wa- I need to go through it. I just need Christ to be with me. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, this is where I want to be, right? Like, I'm not trying to avoid it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to avoid the, th- the things that are coming. I don't necessarily want to, to ha- do all the, the carrying right. of my cross all the time. Right. But if Christ will be with me. Right, right. I mean, that, that's, that's the thing, too, is that, like, when you... <laughs> This, this is why it's just tough. I mean, what's gathered so many people together these last few years is this sense, no matter where they're at on this subject, and meaning the, the, the new age that we're in, right? Everyone recognizes something's happened. Like, at the end of the day, there's this reality that, like, it's, not a, well, it's never, like, for some people, maybe, sure. Like, there's those people, but it's never been about being cavalier for me towards, towards anything. You know what I mean? It, it's, and the only thing I can say is that it's just like this, like Christ being this lodestone, this, 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 this North star. That's just like, okay. You know what I mean? The church, the history of the church, the ethos of the church. And I guess this is one of those things, you know, we began to see why the ethos of the church was so important and where it was lacking, right? Because when it was actually, it wasn't needed. That, that's another thing we, have, we all have to start to recognize. It, it really wasn't needed on the, on the corporate level in the, in the Western world. It wasn't needed. And it, and it took this crisis. This is why, I mean, we, we all come to this place. We're all, we're, we're thankful for what's happened. Because it was, it's, it is the revelation. It is the apocalypse in the sense it's, it's been revealed to us. But like this absence of, of Christ, which is meaning, you know what I mean? Like all, all of these things have been made so clear to us. But what's also made clear to us, and I think this is where the propagation of a counter narrative of conspiracy comes from. 
Because once we wake up to the need of greater meaning, we also wake up to the traps. And we see traps like we never saw them before. And, you know, it's damage control. It's damage control because when you, when you, be, like, when you begin to see like, actually, yeah, this all, this all is a conspiracy, right? And the scripture is full of conspiracies. People conspired against Christ. People conspired against Paul. Like it's the demons conspire against us. And so that's the other thing. The materialists, they don't, they don't believe that. And that's part of the, that's part of them being asleep. They don't believe in the demons. They, you know, they've, and, and yes, we're talking about materialists, quote unquote, Orthodox Christians. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in the demons. They, they believe young more than they do Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? More than they believe, you know, the fathers of the church. And so for them, this idea of, of machinations and things being manufactured, it's preposterous. You sound like a conspiracy theorist. Well, it's like, okay, well, guess what? There's intelligences that exist that have been setting traps and making traps to bring souls to hell since, since the dawn of like time. So, you know, it's a group of people you never, ever, ever have to convince there's demonic activity. It's people who've done a lot of meth. I love working with meth heads because when I work with a meth head, I say, Oh yeah. I mean, it's sorcery. It's witchcraft. Like it's like, like literally it's sorcery. And they're like, yep. Yep. I'm like, okay. And then actually like one dude was telling me some stuff today. And I mean, it's a little bit off topic, but I mean, it's not really, um, is, have you heard of gang stalking? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Is this, this, is this where people like, um, they, they're, it's sort of like they, they, schiz they turn you into schizophrenic by actually like, going around all being around you all the time and like they they like trick trigger schizophrenia or something like that so that's not the definition i heard the definition i heard was a dude i was working with today who um i really like this guy and he is a years with narcotic abuse uh full-fledged you know the full-fledged experience um and he's talking about uh he actually outdid me because usually I have to kind of convince. I never ever have to convince a meth head like ever. Like it's real. They're always like, oh, yeah, 100 percent heroin addicts, you know, PCP, you know, alcoholics sometimes have to kind of bring them to this place of being like, look, this is a spiritual matter, blah, 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 blah. I talk to meth heads and like, no, 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 no. I've seen black things crawling along my wall. Like and I know that that's real. Like I know that that's like a real thing. It's the devil's drug. It's not like. They're like, yeah, I mean, it's not like God's telling people to harvest poppies and like produce heroin with them. God didn't invent like um, fentanyl and stuff like that. Like those aren't those that's not godly knowledge. But from what I understand, this gang stalking thing is I wish I could have asked him a little bit more. And like I was gang him. like gang of four gang G A G G A N G stalking is like there's this feeling of constantly being followed when you're extremely high on methamphetamines and, you know, probably have been up for a couple of days, but there's this feeling of being constantly followed and it correlates in some way with numbers. So like, uh, it's something having to do with like, this guy talking about his specific number was eight and eight was a number that just kind of kept coming up from over and over. And it's not, he said it wasn't like really like a 23 thing where you start seeing a number, you start seeing it everywhere, a blue car thing. He said it was literally like, there's a correlation between that and like, like something having to do with like the practice of the occult or something like that. And like, um, I've heard stories also, I wish I knew more about King stalking. I wish, but like, I thought for sure when you guys would know what it was, what I was talking about, but he is basically like this feeling of like, you're being like, and I hate using this term, but like gaslit, you're being gaslit. You're like slowly being driven insane by like spiritual forces being egged on by what he says is, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I just didn't. I, that's a term I've never heard. It could like, be a Missouri I, thing. I, yeah, it's de I, demonic oppression, right? Isn't that oppression? Yeah, I mean, I, those. I mean, I know I've said it to you guys before, and those who know me first, but like I told people, if it wasn't for Christ, I'd be the guy on the side of the road talking to plants. And and there's this whole. Robert Anton Wilson. He. He talked about this 
phase called Chapel Perilous. And there's this, it correlates in this sense that there, there's a game that begins to be played. And so the thing is, is they begin to manifest to you and the pressure, the game is, is to get you to break. Because once you break and you, and you start talking to them, interacting with them, you know that everyone around you thinks is like, you're crazy, you're crazy, right? So the pressure that the, that the fallen ones do is to get you to just come out with them and be like, this person's a demon, they're demon possessed, right? Because then everyone's gonna be like, oh, you're, you're on, you're, you're obviously in uh, meth and do psychosis. Oh, you are obviously blah, 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 right? I think that's what you're, I think that's the phenomenon you're well, talking about. Yeah, I think I think it is too. But what this person was talking about, like it's an actual, like it's an actual ritual. Like what what they're doing is they're actually like it's like it's it's it goes beyond like demonic harassment. It goes beyond like demonic oppression or anything. It's like an actual thing. Like you make an enemy with a witch, and this is what she does to you. She like she she like she does this like kind of like thing to you that when you're when you're high and yeah 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 because then you're immediately disregard like disregarded as mm -hmm. you're in meth induced psychosis you know like we talked about with um demi lovato okay this lady's on drugs blah 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 mm -hmm. she's going right. crazy whatever no no, right. no 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 like what she's actually doing is she's actually experiencing something and then he talks this dude i was talking with today goes as far as to, like mention stories of people and i'm talking about like this is like ozark crazy of like people like specifically like dropping blood of like infants on their meth before they smoke it and stuff like that wow. before they inject it wow. and it's like this crazy correlation between like this yeah i know it's it, so anyway that's why i wanted to pop in and be like i never ever have to convince those dudes ever because it's like no 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 i know what i was doing i knew the effects of what was happening i knew what was happening and then like that leads into this whole thing where we start talking about hallucinogens and all that good stuff. But I, 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 I don't know, like it, it does have to go to this point of when you're experiencing a reality like that and that strongly, there is no way to convey that to a person. There's like no way to convey that to a person who's never done hallucinogenics. who's never done drugs, the realness and the gravity of it. Um, and when that happens, when you're able to like enter that kind of state and you become susceptible, you open up your, your noose, your window, as father told me a long time ago, things start getting in, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that is kind of like uh, a little bit like what I did when I was a kid um, because I didn't really know I, I was kind of insecure, but you watch a movie, you find the alpha male, the cool dude. So for instance, my first, I can remember off the top of my head, Tyler Durden from fight club. It's like, I'm going to be that guy from now on. Like there is no more Andrew Funk. Like there's Andrew Durden or whatever. Um, so downloading, I'm like downloading it. And then everything has to be run through this prism of who is this guy fracturing my reality, you know, to an extent. Which is what we should do. With what, what would Tyler, what would Tyler Durden do? <laughs> exactly. Right? As opposed to what would Jesus do? Exactly. And uh, and I, I wanted to say this earlier. You guys were on such a roll. But before athletes and before actors, oftentimes children would emulate politicians. Like, so they would find a politician, their representative from Buchanan County, Ohio, or whatever, you know, and they'd be like, that Robert Dodge, I, none of this is real, but like that Robert Dodge really knows how to stick it to those, like, you know, those baggers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So then the, 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 um, man, father, did you, did you get to watch that father Peter Hears video on the mate on bricklayers? No, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Mm -hmm. Man. Okay. Are we, is that bricklayers in quotes? Bricklayers yeah. in quotes. Yeah, bricklayers in quotes. That's a good way to hide from the algorithm, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I, I like that. Bother. I like that. But <laughs> I've been I've been tussling with this too. I think I'm going to ruminate that. I'll bring that up on another on another episode because I'm not sure I can have the connectivity of like the foundations of what America was built on. Like, I don't know if I had that through line yet. But what I can say is I realized this the other day because there's this big advertisement for 
Harry S. Truman, the story, the experience. I hope I didn't derail us too much, but I probably did. The only person to ever drop a world ending device, quote unquote, world ending device was a bricklayer. I would say that was not a Christian that dropped. Doesn't the- surprise me at all. Two doesn't Tom surprise Tom. me. Surprise. Yeah. No. No surprise. And I even heard that uh, the idea of it was at our favorite getaway in California. If you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, in North in Northern California. Yeah. What's that? The Grove. You talking about the Grove? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, see, you know what the problem is? Honestly, the, the problem is, is that, I mean, there's so, like, uh, there's so many people who have been brainwashed, and they, they, I mean, I refuse to be cynical, but there's so many people who just, because of so many other things, basically essentially not them not wanting to pick up a cross they don't want to hear this stuff and they and they need to hear this stuff like people look man hell is real Mm. i just i don't care what you think i don't care if you think that's a uh fundamentalist like whatever that's some sort of medieval construct that was used to like minute like that do whatever you want man like um, and once, once you understand that you, you may not be able to have the love of Christ in regards of like St. Siloam, just, just by, just by the proxy of you being a good person and all that stuff. But if you, if you ask for a taste of, of Inferno, or if you've had one, then you can begin to understand what it means to love your enemies. And, and that's another way. We talked about this, I think, last week, but like I'll take another stab at it. Um, and Father, really quick, I just want to throw in. You'll be no, pre- no, no. Let me finish. All right. I don't, I don't want, and I have lots of enemies. I don't want a single one of them to taste that. Like, I don't want a single person to taste hell because it's so you know what i'm saying like it's so terrible and that is is one of the things that's really important about this conversation this is one of the reasons why it's so sad that lots of people have the guy like andrew was talking about in their life they have their uncle their brother their cousin who they've just written off right because it's easier to write him off he's just a meth head blah 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 it's easier to just write someone off as like, you're just, you're, you're a theorist, whatever it is, because the harder thing is to be like, man, what if it, what if reality really is that scary? That, that's a whole thing. And I think it's important. Mm. Forgive me, Andrew. I, just, I had to, I was going to lose it. No, no, no. That's okay. I, the only thing I was going to say was that when when you experience that you're prepared to hear some really hard things to get out of it. Like when, when a person's really down and out, oh, yeah. when a person's really down and out, you can say like, well, you should feel bad about that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell you. I mean like that, that your conscience is pricked and like, yeah, you should kind of feel scummy about that. That was kind of objectively a really scummy thing to do. You and know? that will lead you to repentance actually. Which if they're is, prepared to hear it, if they're prepared, if you're prepared to, to hear it, if you're if prepared, prepared to, hear to get it. to this place of being like, hey, you know, this is, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to do. I'm ready to do whatever because I've been run through the mill. Mm-hmm. I've done the thing. I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And it's just mm-hmm. like, rather than, you know, in my mind, the entitled millennial who's just using recovery as a way to get happy. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. It's not that. It's I can't ever sell people on happy, joyous and free. That's not. Well, and also also there's like this. Particularly when it comes to recovery, there's this kind of uh, and I don't I, I and I guess this is a modern. Uh, modern thing, but it's it's like. Um, the certificate certificate of completion, sure. right? That it's like, yeah, you you went to, you know, this uh, rehab. You know, this, you know, like celebrities, they go to this, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I spent a month in rehab, so now I'm good. I got my certificate of completion, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> that's not, that's not mm-hmm. it. And I think that that's the. I think that that's really the thing that people have a problem with as they see that they can approach repentance. And it's also the trap because when it's presented to them that it's like, okay, all right, you want to be done time for repentance. And then over here, it's like, oh no, you don't need that. You don't need, oh, they're telling you repentance. Like, oh no, 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 We've got this thing. We've got a program over. And that's the demon. Like, yes. forgive that's- me. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. No, 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 father, go ahead. Like, forgive me. I just, I mean this in, I mean this in love, not in like the love, like I'm trying to win people to like me or like be nice. That's not love. I mean, love as in like actual like care for, for the soul. That is the trap for, for anyone. So if you are a catechumen or interested or whatever, I'm going to break the board wall, whatever. Like I'm just, I just want everyone to understand something. Getting in the church, you being received, baptized, <laughs> baptized, uh, and chrismated, that's just you being handed the tools to do the work. Mm. You're, not, you're not done. Mm-hmm. All, all you've done is begun the process of like what it's going to take. And the reason why I'm saying that is you're going to have people God, God forgive them. You're going to have priests and people tell you just, they won't tell you directly, whatever, but by their actions, they'll be like, oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Do not believe them. Do not believe them. Your entrance into the church, as like we've talked about so many times here, who cares about, who cares about all the reasons? It's so that you can actually repent. And, and that repentance is only possible in the life of Christ, as we're talking about it, and you need the sacraments in order for it to, you can't do it on your own. It's not white knuckling. It's not having your therapist give you a lollipop and a pat on your bottom. That's not, that's not going to cut it. And it's not going to be having a priest kind of like giving you a, a participation gold star every Sunday for, for showing up and not doing anything. Like you can't, you can't expect someone to work it out for you. I just have to tell everybody that like you getting into the church. Okay, great. Now it's time to work. If you're getting told anything else, but that you need to start listening to someone different because they're going to, they're going to lead you to hell. It's not instant gratification. It's the last thing it yeah. is, is instant gratification. The last thing. So, um, uh, so <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> That's the TV thing we were talking about earlier, the, the whole generations of kids that are now programmed, myself included, 100% Me too. programmed. Me too. For, Me too. Yeah. I mean, I remember like in early, or I guess maybe even early, my early walk and when I was first became Orthodox or whatever, being like, then my prayer was like, treat, please. Like, treat, mm-hmm. please. Like, what do I get? Treat, please. Mm-hmm. And when that stops working, and then it eventually became comforting that you don't get a treat when you pray. Because it's like, okay, well then, you know, sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't get a treat. And then that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you were an Orthodox Christian and you prayed. <laughs> and God, you know. So then I have to ask you guys, I was going to ask earlier, but I'm going to ask now, what's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite Smith's album? <laughs> I don't know the Smiths well enough to, to say my favorite album. They have, they have an album called The Queen is Dead. Queen is dead. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. There That's you fine. go. <laughs> yeah, but Cyprian, actually, I'm really happy you did this. Earlier in our thread, you talked about this quote by St. Po- Piemann. 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 Okay. Yeah. St. Piemann. So I thought, oh, I'm sorry. We're coming up on uh, two hours. So yes. I thought that actually this would be really, really good because this was, so the quote is, and um, I'm going to, I hope my phone doesn't die, but um, to the question, which is better to speak or to be silent? The yeah, elders said, what's that? Share it on the screen. You got the thing? 
Oh, uh, probably. Oh, hey, there you go. Yeah. Hold on. Let me, uh, hold on. I'll find it. Give me one second, guys. You're fine. And uh, let's see. Saint and let me see. Oops. Here, uh, Venerable Peeman the Great. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, Father, since uh, being in the Midwest, Christ. what is your favorite season? Oh. Well, fall has always been my favorite season. Fall is dope. You know. Okay, here I've I've got it. I've got it here now. Okay, hold on. Only this year do I feel like I actually appreciated summer. I've never liked summer. Mm-hmm. And then I got to summer and I'm like, I'm doing it this year. I'm getting Wait. hot. I'm getting bug bites. I'm eating barbecue. Speaking I'm swimming. Sense. Okay. I did all of it. Here we go. Good. Share screen. You know what? I'm glad yeah. you did it too. I'm glad I did too, because I've never been a summer guy. And this time I was like, I'm going to do the whole thing. And I'm just going to lean into it. Wait. No, this is it. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's, a, li- it's a little, it's a little different, but it's the, sa- it's the same thing. It's probably the translation, but go ahead. So to the question of whether it is better to speak or to be silent, the elder said, whoever speaks on account of God does well. And whoever is silent in account of, on account of God, that one also does well. He also said, if man seems to be silent, but his heart condemns others, then he is always speaking. There may be a man who talks all day long, but he is actually silent because he says nothing unprofitable. Okay, so one of the spiritual principles that I had learned before I discovered the church or before the church found me was the idea of Lao Tzu's, like, those you know don't talk and those who talk don't know. And that carried over kind of into the church where I had this idea of these monks silently not really saying anything, but being able to smile and convey like deep theological truths to people. And that's all true. That's all true. Mm -hmm. But so I always kind of held it against people for a while. And I've obviously since repented that of people who speak a lot, people who talk a lot. Um, But I mean, St. John Chrysostom talked a lot. He talked a lot. And it was, I mean, it's in the name Chrysostom. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. The gold was falling out of his mouth. I mean, like, So I've wondered this, you know, I guess I, I I guess I still have kind of like a residual, like um, there's some part of my soul that still doesn't like it when people talk a lot, but I'm beginning certainly within the last couple of years to really see the extreme, the extreme like benefit of it, the benefit of people who like talk and can talk well and like can 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 continue to come back and touch on things continue to come back and like reiterate topics and be able to like loop it back and it has to be god like i i sometimes mm-hmm. listen to people who talk um elders priests monks you know whoever just priests and it's like it does has to be god because there's no way the brain is keeping up and able to come back and be like, it's time to touch back now on this. It's time to come back and loop that back together with this. It's time to tie all this together. It has to be like, you know, like a tongue of fire. Like it has to be like, it has to be like the Holy Spirit working through that person because mm-hmm. I've tried it. I've tried it. And when I'm not doing spiritually well, it's garbage. You know, it's garbage. But when I'm attentive, when I'm prayerful and I talk to people, like, I was talking to someone earlier today and a large portion of my job is talking and there's this thing about Missouri folk. Apparently I've heard that we love to talk. We're orators apparently. So um, uh, I, I take my talking rather seriously sometimes, but the thing that I notice is, is that um, when I'm able to talk, like I, I'll do like, how do I talk to this person who's coming out of corrections for 15 years how do i talk to this person like what do i have to talk with them about they're re-entering society after being in jail or in prison for 15 years and i go to reach for it and it's there like and it's there and i'm able to like make a connection and i know that's not me like i know that's not me i know and it's profitable to that person because they express as much 
they say like, wow, man, that's actually really, really helpful. I'm like, glory to God. You know, that that's not me because I've tried to do this before I went into the church. It was a gift I was given and I squandered it because I was being stupid and reckless with it. But like now that I'm working on it, being able to talk, I find it is extremely profitable and that there are times where people's whole dispositions, even their recovery journey or their spiritual journey or whatever can come down to one really, really good talk. Like one time when like, you really, there's like this access point that you just nail right when they need it, right when you hit it. And it's just like, it breaks through some stuff and some stuff starts to alter about the reality. So when Cyprian, and obviously we're on a podcast, so we're talking, when Cyprian sent that, I was like, well, I should probably talk about that because is, and I'll be done after this, but Father Cosmos talked about this one time, this bishop that refused to correct people. Like he was, he was like, he was silent and they're like, oh, this holy, holy man does refuses to correct people. And then he's like, well, then he should have been a monk, not a bishop, you know, because there's a difference because the bishop is supposed to talk. And like, not only that, but father, correct me. I think there is a part where it's like, if the priest refuses to talk on it, anathema, like if the priest refuses to talk about stuff, then let him, you know, be cut off from the church because he's not doing his job. He's not talking. So you there's guys a lot talk. Of, there's a lot of uh, red cards that are going to get doled out because of certain, there was just so, there's so few who spoke out these last couple of years and still haven't spoken out. And they're going to get a red card for sure. Unless they repent of it, they're going to get a red card because I should have said something. Hmm. Wow. You're a watchman on the wall. That's your job. A priest is a bunch of things. You know, it's the sheepdog, uh, the physician, you know, the father, all those things, you know. Um, but you're also a watchman on the wall. And you fail if you don't ring the bell and warn the people of, of, of enemy at the gate. You've failed. You've, you have not only failed, but God help you, you, you perhaps are a betrayer. Perhaps you've, you are the one who's allowed the enemy in the gate. And there's those, those unfortunately do exist as well. Yeah. I didn't think I'd ever believe that that was possible, like pre 2020, but now I'm like, oh yeah, without a doubt. And but so you know, it's always been that way. I know. There's always been false brethren. There's always been. Even I know now, that this is, he says even now he sends you out as sheep among the wolves, you know? I know that, again, I'm sorry, this is kind of off topic. These were things I wanted to talk about tonight. The conversation didn't go that way, so I'm going to stick them in here at the end. Father, it blew my mind. I think I was driving for the first time the other day. No, I was driving, and I thought for the first time the other day, whoa, the Catholics changed the direction of their altar. Like, and that like really hit me. I was like, oh my gosh. And I, I was like stunned. Yep. Like it was like, it was like through my body. I was like, I was like, you could have, I was like, yeah, they changed the direction of the altar. That's whack. But then I, mean, I was like, oh my listen, gosh. Listen, I. Was I, that I, Vatican too? Or when was that? Vatican two. Okay. I, I had a conversation the, today about that. And. That's not the only conversation I've had with someone who, like, I am, I, I, I mean, like, I'm a scumbag, whatever. That's great. Like, I don't, I don't matter. My point being is, in my life, I personally know people who have suffered incredible damage from, let's just, let's just, like, say Vatican II. We don't, we're not going to open up the whole thing again sure. but like that's just me like i'm nobody like my little six block radius of kansas city like who cares you know what i'm saying all that being said if i know people who it's done incalculable like damage on just imagine like i'm not even in a circle where there's like i would have access to a lot of like roman catholics pre-vatican too like 
people don't understand. Like we don't, you know, cause I got, I got brothers, you know what I mean? I got brother priests, we talk, but, but like, I, I have been, you know, very fortunate, you know, uh, like mother Elizabeth, right. I mean, she's like that number one example of someone who's in my care who like people don't understand how devastating that was. So many good, pious Christians, Catholic, like Roman Catholics were just upended by those changes for no reason, for no re- for no, no legitimate reason. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a reason. There, no, there's, there's a, re- a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. Man. And then the last question that I've been meaning to ask father, um, yeah, you got, you got like a little sample size from like the population and even in your, even in your like little sample size, there's a number of people who are like, right. yeah, Vatican II messed me up. Right. But what is the, what's the meaning? What's like the spiritual significance of a kiss? Because like, like, you know, cause it obviously means something. Yeah. We'll kiss the sun lest he be angry. <laughs> you know that from salt. For the- yeah. 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 So like Judas, Judas betrayed our Lord with a kiss. That's what I'm, and we kiss icons. I kiss my wife. I kiss my kids. Like, but I don't, I don't kiss Cyprian. Like, you know, I don't kiss like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't. Cause like, we're not of, cause we're not of that culture. If we are in, if we're of a middle Eastern culture though, we might yeah. upon greeting each other. Yeah. Slavic that's true. Too. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Absolutely. So, Okay, then let me think of a different way to rephrase. Well, as an Eastern Orthodox Christian, you would. Oh, I kiss dudes every Sunday. Yeah, kiss a piece. Yeah, kiss a piece, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We actually just went through a whole thing on a on a thread from our uh, parish where we were talking about who's a kisser and who who just does the back and forth during the kiss a piece. But who know who actually gets up on the other dude's cheek and gives a kiss? But like, I mean. So is it just like, it's just like a nice thing to do. It's just like a sign of like intimacy or is there like, I thought I might have something to do with the breath and the mouth. Like, I don't know. You know? I'll be honest with you. That's something that I would love to see some patristic commentary on. I, I, I'm curious myself. I would love to, to dig into that question. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll dig into it and we'll see. I mean, I could speculate, but like, I think I just, there's something telling me there's something really good patristically there. You just got to find it. You know what I mean? So. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it has something to do with life. I don't know. Cause we are breathing. I don't know. I'm speculating. So anyway. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's two hours, gents. Um, let's roll with that for now. Um, okay. So people have been asking me and I tried to comment back and it would never let me, I don't know. I'm breaking some kind of rule or something. If people want to email, it's Andrew at Royal network. Please email me. One of the comments asked for my email and somebody else chimed in and said, yes, uh, I would like it too. And I kept trying to send it. I kept trying to re- respond to it. You have to, you have to write it out. You got to write Andrew, then the word space, the word dot. Uh, or Andrew, then the word at Royal like Path spaced dot apart. network. Yeah, but oh. the word, not the symbol, but the word at and the word dot. Oh, okay. Well, I'm like, not going to do that. I'm just going to say it now. So I'm just saying Andrew at Royal Path dot network. Please email me. Please get a hold of me. I'm, I've been trying really hard to get back to people as quickly as I can. Um, and uh, we still have the merch store, which I believe is mm-hmm. good to go. And then Royal, we, pa- Royal Path that store, and we have the playlist. I think it's yep. up to date. I think it's got all the j- the jams we have discussed. It is now quite quite diverse. It is quite diverse. You have Necrophagist and Bet Midler on the same playlist. So <laughs> who, who would have thunk it? <laughs> along with Death Grips and I don't know Cro Magnums. So there you go. That's pretty dope. Um, Are you going to be able to do like a live Q and A? That someone had brought that up. That would be an interesting. I I'm absolutely down. I'm. You're I've talking got about some questions. Like, I've like, got questions. I have no them. idea how we would do that. Oh, a live Q and A live stream? Sure, we could do that. I'm we down. I, I I trust Cyprian. Maybe we could do that next one. Maybe 
we could give people yeah. the heads up about that for next time. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, th I think that's good. Okay, can we make like an announcement? Well, we should talk about this off air. Let's talk about this off air. This is not yeah, interesting yeah. For anybody. Yeah, All right, everyone. yeah, we could do it. It's easy. Thanks for having a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.